My name is Zaza Kuchua, and I work at Cincinnati Children's Research Foundation at the University of Cincinnati. And I would like to express my uh, thanks to organizers for inviting me here to share this um, study on small uh, drug trial of uh, uh, PPR agonist bezafibrate on this mouse model of uh, Barth syndrome. So, uh, as we know, clinical characteristics of Barth syndrome include um, cardiomyopathy, usually dilated, uh, often with um, LV non compactions, also muscle weak weakness, exercise intolerance, spontaneous male fetal loss, and uh, biochemical findings include methyl, uh, glutaconic aciduria and they also cardiolipin deficiency, of course, in the mitochondria with an accumulation of monolysal cardiolipins. Mouse model was created several years ago. It's called Tafazin Knockdown because it's knockdown, not knockout. And it's achieved by SH-mediated RNA interfering uh, mechanisms. So it requires doxycycline to induce this knockdown. Now, uh, this mouse model also shares uh, many features of human um, conditions like cardiolipin deficiency, uh, accumulation of monolysal cardiolipins in cardiac and skeletal muscle, uh, structural abnormalities of mitochondria, uh, defects in mitochondrial respiratory chain, uh, mitochondrial proliferation, and uh, Tafazi knocked out mice uh, develop uh, dilated cardiomyopathy by at six months of age, which is different from human conditions. Humans often have uh, cardiac manifestations early in life, and they also have a uh, diminished exercise capacity. Often uh, mitochondrial defects uh, in uh, heart and uh, skeletal muscle and liver are compensated by natural mechanisms by upregulation of mitochondrial biogenesis, transcriptional upregulations. And it's something that nature can tells us that maybe this is a mechanism we can also use to help uh, bar patients. And the, um, the master um, regulator of the mitochondrial uh, biogenesis, one of the master regulators is PGC1-alpha in heart and skeletal muscles and liver. And it's a transcriptional co-activator that uh, regulates the <coughs> genes involved in energy uh, metabolism. Uh, it's transcription factor, but it doesn't have trans DNA binding domain. Instead, of, uh, instead it uh, recruits uh, other protein, PPR, to bind to the DNA. And there's a three, the PPRs are peroxisome proliferator activated receptors. There's a nuclear receptors, they reside in the nucleus. And there's a three of them, uh, alpha, beta, gamma, and alpha and beta are in enriched in skeletal, uh, cardiac and skeletal muscles, while um, <clears throat> gamma is more adipocyte specific. So uh, these uh, PPRs are, uh, reside in the nuclear membrane. This is nucleus. So, and they can be activated with various uh, ligands, like a fatty, acid, fatty acids or uh, other drugs. And uh, once uh, they activate it, once ligand binds, it uh, goes to the nucleus, binds to DNA, recruits PGC1-alpha or retinoid acid receptor, and in, in, uh, induces transcription of mitochondrial genes and mitochondrial biogenesis. So beside PGC1-alpha, it also has a, a retinoid acid uh, receptor, uh, RXR, which also in, uh, induces different different set of uh, mitochondrial energy metabolism genes. Uh, and uh, it can upregulate fatty acid oxidation, uh, glycolysis, <coughs> uh, ketone metabolism, and others. Uh, as I said, it, uh, PPRs are the targets of uh, several ligands, and thus also uh, PPRs are um, targets of uh, therapeutic interventions, pharmacological interventions, and those are the drugs that's uh, been created as are activators, or we call it agonists of PPR, PPRs of different uh, types of PPRs, 
And the, some of them, you can say, uh, they are already marketed. Some of them are uh, different phases of the drug trials or just used as a research tools. Uh, one of the uh, one we used was bezafibrate. It was uh, synthesized Behringer. It's marketed in several countries, and uh, it's um, uh, it's been uh, in the market uh, about 35 years. And this is the uh, drug we uh, I'll, be, I'll be talking. It's has a several uh, d uh, drug forms uh, and. Um, uh, it's, I think it's approved in uh, European Union countries. So the mechanism of how, how it acts, it's, uh, it just binds to the um, protein, several uh, different uh, residues of the, uh, inside of the protein and stabilizes its structure. So it has a two, actually two sides where uh, which PPR can bind to uh, two fibrates and they stabilize the structure. So this stabilized uh, protein is uh, goes to the uh, nucleus and binds to the DNA and uh, inducing the cascade of uh, transcription activation of uh, different uh, genes. But we have to keep in mind that bezafibrate works if there's a residual activity present. For example, this is VLK deficient fibroblasts from humans. And the uh, VLK is a fatty acid oxidation enzyme. Um, and if uh, this, they may, uh, this, uh, in this study, they measured uh, fatty acid flux through the, uh, in the fibroblast. So if enzyme activity is zero, bezafibrate not much can do. So it, you can see that uh, with and without bezafibrate, it's pretty much zero. However, if, if uh, residual activity is present of the VLK, then bezafibrate can increase that activity, multiply it and uh, uh, bring up to the normal level or even beyond. So uh, we decided to go with this drug because uh, in uh, tough as in knockdown mice, in mitochondria, uh, fatty acid oxidation is diminished, but it's not zero, it's not killed. So you can see that here it's a mitochondria isolated from um, tough as in knockdown mice and uh, wild type mice. And if we, if we give, uh, palmitate as a substrate for respiration. In wild type mice, it brings, it uh, in, induces respiration almost at maximal level. While in toughness knockout mice, it's about half, but it's not zero. So bezafibrate may succeed here. And we designed this study uh, on mouse models. Um, we induced uh, toughness in knockdown in uterus. So giving um, uh, doxycycline to pregnant females. Uh, and um, when they were born, they were uh, genotyped after 21 days. And uh, at 2.5 months of age, they were subjected to echocardiography. So echocardiography was, uh, cardiac phenotype was our uh, endpoint in this study. So we measured um, cardiac function using these uh, echoes. And after this, we decided, divided these mice into the two different cohorts, wild type and knockout mice, in two different cohorts. One is was the, with the external stress, additional stress to, um, uh, to uh, unveil the cardio, cardiac phenotype early in life. And another one was, uh, was going naturally with aging when uh, um, cardiac phenotype becomes uh, noticeable at about six, seven months of age. So in this study, we gave them isoproteinol. Isoproteinol is a drug that um, activates the beta-adrenergic uh, uh, pathway and uh, increase the workload on, on heart. So that's uh, an additional stress for uh, this heart. And the, the, in this case, uh, as I will show, um, phenotype was developed, the cardiac phenotype was developed early in life. So these mice got car uh, echo. Uh, cardiomyopathy, while without bezafibrate, we had to wait until to seven months and do two, at least two echocardiographies to see the phenotype. So we called it ISO model and non-ISO model, just to be clear. Okay, this is how a beta adrenergic response works. We isoproteinol or catecholamines bind to the receptor 
increased uh, CMP levels eventually in, 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 in the cell, which activates pro protein kinase A, uh, phosphorylates um, calcium channel proteins, increases calcium flux, and increases cardiac contractility, increasing uh, workload. And uh, another uh, question we had to deal is the dosage of the basophibrate. Um, because the, uh, there's a controversy in the studies, in the literature that we're dealing with, it's in, uh, in humans, basophibrate is used about this 10 milligrams kilogram per day. Uh, while in mice, uh, it's uh, all the, data, all the uh, papers that were before published, they used 30, 80 times more than human dose. However, uh, 10 milligram uh, kilogram uh, basophibrate is uh, not effective to activate PPR in rodent cells. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> uh, after careful uh, consideration, we decided to go anyway with this uh, model with 30 to 80 fold higher uh, basophibrate than in humans, just to make sure that we won't uh, miss the, uh, any therapeutic, uh, therapeutic uh, potential of uh, action of this drug. However, we probably need to do another studies with uh, lower drug dosages as well. Okay, first, uh, what happens when uh, before the basophibrate applied be before the isoproteinol at uh, young uh, mice, wild type at knockout? So not much. Heart rate is was lower in uh, uh, 2.5 2 months of age in uh, Tafazi knockout mice. And that brings also cardiac output, which is the uh, calculator from heart rate and the stroke volume. It's also lower. And uh, another diastolic um, uh, parameter, mitral uh, valve E2A ratio, was higher in uh, tafazin knockout mice. But other, like ejection fraction, fractional short systolic function were, was normal, were not different. So what isoproteinol did? Isoproteinol actually or had no, not much effect on systolic function in wild-type mice. However, in uh, Tafazi knockout mice, it worsened the, it's uh, aggra uh, aggravated the uh, phenotype, cardiac phenotype in this, but uh, fractional shortening, ejection fraction, so. Now, about the effect of basophibrate. So now we have this model where cardiac function develops and fourth uh, cardiac dysfunction develops at uh, 4.5 months of age. And you can see that if you um, give basophibrate, which is the solid line here, this is tough as a knockout, this is, so it actually preserves cardiac function in uh, tough as a knockout mice. And it even has a uh, um, positive effect in uh, wild type mice. So, it actually, the ejection fraction becomes stronger in uh, basophibrate treated mice, both in wild type and tafazin knockout. Same goes with the fractional shortening. And uh, that's uh, phenotype that develops uh, in iso treated mice, isoproton treated mice at 4.5 months of age. Um, cardiac output, uh, basophibrate had no effect on the cardiac output because it didn't increase much uh, heart rate. Although heart rate was increased, although stroke volume was decreased, and I'll show uh, why it happens uh, a little later. But uh, cardiac output, which is how much blood is pumped through the system with heart, is, wasn't affected in, uh, with beza or without or with beza fibrate. Now, what happens if we don't give the isoproteinol these mice? So we have to wait until seven months until phenotype develops up to cardiomyopathy becomes apparent. So that's what we did. And we were able to actually do two echocardiograph examinations uh, after 2.5 months of age was the first one. And the first follow-up uh, echo was done at 4.5. And uh, final echo was done at seven months of age. At 4.5 months of age, there was a not uh, huge difference between wild type and knockouts. Uh, in terms of systolic function, ejection fraction, and fractional shortening. Uh, all, but at uh, seven months of age, the differences were significantly significant. And uh, again, uh, basophibrate protected 
development of the systolic dysfunction at seven months of age. Same goes with the fractional shortening here. But it seems that bezafibrate, uh, even though it has a, this positive effect on the systolic, systolic dysfunction, had some uh, undesirable side effect. And that's a, um, when it was used for a prolonged period of time, for four months, it caused um, some muscle wasting in the left ventricle. So if we give, uh, again, this is the um, posterior wall thickness on the le left ventricle. So we give bezofibrate. It initial reaction is uh, it makes uh, wall thicker. But after this, it drops down. Um, and the same is with LV mass. We can see that at least in wild type mice, uh, it gives uh, um, increases thickness uh, of the left ventricle wall, and after this, it drops uh, to the uh, to, to the down. So it, it actually thins the uh, uh, left ventricle wall, and it causes, uh, as we as I think, it's muscle loss when it's uh, used for a long period of time. We didn't see this effect when it was for two months, but for, in four months it became uh, obvious. So this is echo, uh, this is wild type mice of this left ventricle, you can see here, contraction. This is uh, actually tough as in knockout mice, uh, and uh, uh, you can see lower heart rate, and, uh, and uh, this is with the bezafibrate. It's tough as in knockout with the bezafibrate, you can see that uh, it restores the function, it uh, contracts much stronger. However, the left ventricle uh, volume is smaller. Mm. Another endpoint was the uh, uh, exercise capacity in these mice, and that wasn't affected because in, uh, if you can see, tough as you knock out mice had a lower exercise capacity than uh, wild types. In wild types, bezafibrate didn't have any effect neither in, tougher, uh, in the exercise capacity, neither in wild type and nor in tough as in knockout mice. So it seems like it's the vasofibrate if it works and works on the systolic function or in heart. So it had no effect on the uh, skeletal muscle um, <coughs> performance, or uh, not skeletal muscle performance, I, was, I should say exercise uh, capacity. Uh, <coughs> So, so far, what we found that uh, chronic beta-adrenergic stress aggravates the cardiac phenotype in tough as in knockout mice. Uh, impairments in cardiac uh, systolic function in isotreated tough as in knockout mice developed by uh, much earlier, 4.5 months of age, while without, without uh, this treatment, cardiac phenotype, and in this case, is a uh, dilated cardiomyopathy or uh, systolic dysfunction becomes uh, <coughs> apparent at seven months of age. Uh, Bezafibrate uh, improves uh, hemodynamics of uh, tough as in knockout mice, increasing ejection fraction and fractional shortening, but appears to have a cytotoxic effect in, uh, on the heart when used for a prolonged period of time, like four months and it has no apparent effect on car exercise capacity. So uh, we, uh, in the end of the trial, we sacrificed mice, we uh, got all tissues, and they were performing some molecular studies, so we f what we found was going on there. So one, one mitochondrial uh, content is, appears to increase, in bezafibrate induces mitochondrial biogenesis, and uh, that's evident from the increase of mitochondrial DNA in bezafibrate treated mice. Uh, and also site rate synthase is also increased. This is marker of the mitochondrial marker. Uh, <coughs> uh, electron transport chains also increased. This is um, calculated from the Western blood analysis of, uh, of the electron transport chain and activity is also increased. You can see this wild type and uh, beza, uh, with the bezafibre treatment in tough knockout mice. Um, and then we also did a uh, cardiolipin analysis, so hoping that cardiolipin will be improved. So it wasn't cases that uh, we, we learned. 
So this is uh, um, this analysis was done by uh, Dr. Fred Frederick Vass at Amsterdam. So <coughs> we sent him uh, frozen heart samples, and he extracted the uh, phospholipids and performed this analysis and found this uh, most abundant molecular species with uh, with, with, with 72 uh, carbon uh, species, cardiolipin uh, species. And um, it was almost 80%. But in our calculation, we took everything that was above 0.5%. So for further ana analysis and see what's going on with the, uh, again, this is the wild type mice without any treatment. So um, as was expected, expected uh, this uh, 72 carbon, uh, which is, uh, I think, are L4 cardiolipin species are significantly reduced in tafazin knockout mice. So this is wild type mice, it's one, and it's logarithmic scale, just keep in mind. So this about uh, decreased by about 7% uh, and 20% uh, correspondingly. Um, <coughs> and uh, that's what we've seen before in cardiac, uh, cardiac muscle. So what bezafibrate does, it worsens the, it brings cardiolipin uh, levels in this uh, tough as in uh, knockout mice, even uh, to lower levels. So it's uh, <coughs> interesting that we have improved cardiac function with uh, lowering cardiolipin levels. So which hard to reconcile, but um, uh, this is another uh, method by uh, analyze, uh, quantifying cardiolipins with monolysocardiolipin. Uh, content, and you can see that bezafibrate uh, increases monolysocardiolipin to cardiolipin uh, ratio. Um, so what's going on, I think, it's that uh, bezafibrate it does uh, induce uh, PGC1-alpha uh, uh, PPR pathway. That transcriptionally activates mitochondrial uh, biogenesis. And we have more mitochondria with the same amount of tafazin so there's no way cardiolipin can get, uh, we can get enough mature cardiolipin to, uh, for all these uh, new mitochondria. So we have more new mitochondria with immature cardiolipin uh, content. Also, it's immature, uh, with more mitochondria is enough to um, satisfy bioenergetic uh, Demands of the cells probably makes more uh, ATP, uh, so bioenergetic output is increased, which improves cardiac function. However, it also increases uh, oxidative stress, which may cause the cell death, and uh, cause uh, that was uh, probably it's a cause of uh, muscle wasting in the when we use this bezafibrate for a prolonged period of time, and uh, one way to deal with this probably would be the to use the synergistic approach and use the mitochondrial targeted antioxidants to defense, defend heart from the oxidative stress also. And that's actually what's uh, interesting because uh, like a two or three weeks ago, there was paper published uh, showing that uh, increased fatty acid oxidation uh, actually causes tachyxia in the cancer patients and muscle wasting, so maybe that same mechanism works here. Um, the another way to do, uh, also improve the transcriptional um, potential of the, uh, this bezafibrate by, by epigenetic modifications of chromatin here, so make, uh, so it will, may, it may decrease the uh, amount of drug that is necessary for uh, activation of this pathway, and it needs to be tested. Uh, but uh, take home message is that PPR agonists have a therapeutic potential to, uh, to uh, <coughs> compensate cardiac defects in a BART uh, mou syndrome mouse model, and activation of PPR with bezafibrate preserves systolic uh, indices in tafazid knockout mice without improving cardiolipin content. That was something new. Um, potential of bar uh, bezafibrate for skeletal muscle uh, is uh, uncertain yet, and, uh, but uh, it appears that bezafibrate is a double-edged sword activation of PPR with uh, bezafibrate 
uh, improves bioenergetic output in cardiac cells, but may uh, cause a cross-mediated death and muscle loss. And the plans uh, in the future will be synergistic, test the synergistic potential of uh, mitochondria targeted antioxidants and that those uh, dependent response of cardiac function of desafiridate should be investigated. And I want to thank my collaborators, uh, Corey and Young did all this uh, work. Corey now, uh, Young has now his own lab in Arkansas. And uh, uh, Vicky Moore did all the echocardiographic studies and Fred analyzed cardiolysis. Thank you. We have time for a couple of questions. Mm. Matt, behind you. Oh, I just have a quick question. Um, how did you administer the ISO during that two and a half months? Oh, ISO, we, sorry, we, we, we during 14 days period with that microosmotic pump. My we implanted uh, osmotic pump into the. Uh, no, no, we had only four, once 14 days, and after this, my ISO was gone. So the, I was intrigued that the E to A ratio was so different in the t uh, TAS knockdown mice. This is all very consistent with, with our findings that, that Colin made about the uh, basically uh, ventricular, I mean, the diastolic dysfunction, right? Um, this, so I didn't see this. When you treated with basal fry rate, did you, did you measure the E to A ratio also? Uh, well, uh, <coughs> E to A ratio was a little hard to measure because when we, we sent these mice with say, double, uh, I mean, not double, but it's just like a blind studies too for the echocardiographists, mm -hmm. and they send us uh, results back, and many times they don't send all the E to uh, A. They, they are not able to measure. So what they send us uh, when we did the, uh, uh, 2.5 months of age mice, those E to A ratios, we had so much in the uh, number of animals that I see. we were actually right. able to. But potentially that would be a, could be a very sensitive radar, right? Yes. And I think that's uh, because of uh, maybe um, atrial problems because uh, E to A, I mean, it's, it's like A is increased. One last question. Yeah. Hi, Marnie Falk from CHOP. I, I have a question why you chose bezafibrate. So bezafibrate is very controversial in the mito field in general. So the COX-10 mice uh, died when they got it. The complex four assembly mice, the twinkle mice seem to have some improvement. So it's really controversial. But did you consider bezafibrate versus, you know, more selective PPAR agonists? Well, uh, we wanted first to do the uh, pan agonists of the uh, PPR, so actually increased all the PPRs. And the bezafibrate is controversial, I agree, but it's also well studied. Uh, that's why it was our, but uh, probably it will be the next step also to test some PPR al uh, alpha specific agonists. But they, these agonists also have uh, several um, <clears throat> side effects. Like in this case, we saw uh, liver damage if we use for a long time. We do see the accumulation of fat in the liver, steatosis, but uh, no, no, with the bezafibrate, which is case also for the PPR alpha agonists as well. So they do the same; they have same uh, side effects. Thank you, Zaza. We'll move on.